So, yeah, I'm very, very happy to be here in Israel again. Uh, so, since I, you know, uh, we come here regularly because Exeter Frankfurt, uh, it's, um, it's a program, not the typical uh, acceleration program that you would have here in Israel, but what we do actually that we bring companies that already have got their investments and already have clients and a product and who want to actually enter the German market. So we bring also Israeli companies uh, to, to Germany, uh, mainly companies in fintech and cybersecurity. But lately, I think, uh, like we discussed or heard from the previous presentation, blockchain is the, the next tech that is getting very interesting. So I myself, uh, I've been investing in, in blockchain and fintech for, for in, in, in blockchain for the last two years, but in fintech since eight years. So for me, of course, it's very close to heart to come here and see the newest uh, technologies emerging in Israel. And I would also say that uh, blockchain is, is uh, since a couple of years, been very close to my heart. I was for one year a CEO, intermediate CEO of a, of a well advanced blockchain company selling data to, um, to hedge funds. So very exciting to be here. I wanted to share with you a couple of um, new developments in, in from our side. So we have also pivoted like many startups do, but uh, we moved uh, more towards blockchain because we feel that now is really the time when these kind of um, technology can be implemented to, to uh, you know, corporates. And how do, how do we operate? So we have, I would say, two sides. Similar that we had also with the Accelerator Frankfurt, we have the startups and we have the financial industry, banks, insurance companies, and big corporates. So we are not there actually to kill the banks, we are there to collaborate with them. And I, and I think that those startups who understand the importance of, and understand actually how difficult it is to get into the B2B market, understand that collaboration is the key. So what we offer the startups is the access to these uh, big corporates where they can do POCs, and what we offer to the corporates is the access to startups that there's already been done a due diligence. We have chosen those startups that have you know, uh, services that these uh, companies are looking for. So for us, uh, we are concentrating on the six pillars uh, that you can see on the screen. And I think uh, the importance for uh, why have we been successful, successful helping, for example, also the Israeli companies enter the, the German market is our network. The network of cor cor uh, corporates that we work with, work with and also, of course, our mentor network, very uh, established and, and successful entrepreneurs and investors themselves. Um, you could imagine that what is then, how is then blockchain different from fintech? I mean, that's fintech, I think most of us understand the topic of today is fintech. Is with fintech you can, uh, you can take one solution, one small narrow solution and implement it directly. With blockchain you need to think about the whole ecosystem. For example, if you would have a new tokenized asset, you need to think about, okay, who is going to hold the custody of this product? What kind of technological platform am I going to use? Uh, um, who, where I'm going to be able to exchange this asset. So there are many aspects to think about when you move into the blockchain. Uh, but today's topic is then to look at these kind of different use cases. Where is blockchain used today in finance industry? And I think the major thing is where, of course, when you think about it, is clearing and settlements. And what is the difficulty and why does it take so much time today? Is because you need trust and you need security. And this is, of course, the main purpose of what blockchain offers. We offer, uh, you know, you don't need to trust any of the parties because everything is on blockchain. It's immutable. Nobody can go and change afterwards, you know, who owns what. You can see it there very clearly. And I think today also IBM I mentioned before and it was discussion, trade finance is clearly this one big thing that's interesting to everybody. It, there's been estimated uh, that maybe it's a business worth of uh, $20 million. It's a huge business to, that either you are part of it or, or you will lose a huge uh, revenue source. And there are, of course, other implementations that you have. Cross-border payments, we heard also about Facebook and Libra today. That is, of course, something very exciting and new that's happening in this space. The other two uh, insurance I'm also going to talk a little bit later. But main thing, as I said, is the security, it's the immutability, it's the trust. So clearly, we can solve many problems regarding know your customer, anti-money laundry, and these kind of issues. If we go a little bit more into detail, so we think about banking. So in trade finance, today when you think about doing finance, there's a lot of processes, there's a lot of paperwork that's involved, a lot of risk. And uh, I myself was uh, involved in, in the paper industry a long time, where you do businesses worth of hundreds of millions. 
you know, moving goods to a, a different country and you don't really know if you can trust this party. So you need a bank in the other end, you need a bank in the end of the, of the client, and a lot of paperwork with a letter of credit. So these kind of problems you can also very easily, or let's say easily, in principle at least, solve with blockchain. So clearly there's a, there's, there's a need for this. And the other example I think that we can already see today is syndicate loans. This is being done already in many different countries. Uh, and thus, it's, you do the same for the same reasons to minimize the risk and to you know, minimize paperwork and, and automate things. But also, there is another area where you can use blockchain, is insurance. In insurance, I think the biggest problem is, of course, a lot of paperwork. Uh, anyone who had a claim, especially if you have it on the business side, you know how much paperwork you have to do. But if you could, you know, for example, build a blockchain, uh, um, uh, a ledger, where you can install all kind of information about fraudulent behavior. You could use today buzzwords, AI machine learning, to really teach the system, and all the banks could use it, or the insurance companies could use it and see this kind of behavior is fraudulent, and they could avoid a lot of, you know, um, save a lot of money and, and, and um, make these businesses also more profitable. Auditing, I mean, KPMG maybe is already looking at this, but that you could automate certain processes, like when you make uh, your income statement, final statements, and you could do this all real time, on time, and save a lot of uh, time and cost. And of course, something that's close to my heart also is always finance and investing. Today we say there's a lot of uh, time also wasted when we have uh, people who have to vote. Let's say you have, even in a traditional industry, you have a general meeting. You need to hear people's opinions about would they go for or against certain proposals that you make. If you could do this all online, blockchain, you could know who voted for what and get immediate results, you could also save a lot of time. And actually, of course, afterwards, in post-trade activities, this is also a technology that can use and reduce a lot of settlement times. So then I wanted to go more into practical details. As I said, how, the, how we operate in the blockchain labs, we have on the other side the startup and the other side the, the, the finance industry, the bank, who wants to use this technology but maybe is not really sure how could I use it. So here I took uh, an example of one company, Anyblocks, who is also from the region of Frankfurt that we work together with. And just to show you a couple of examples, how, what kind of you know, solutions could they provide to your company. So here you have a, a, a banking consortium, different banks wanted to do a trade bond uh, transaction together. You could use your own individual banking software, or you, and, and then on the other hand you can see, uh, I think right hand, you can see the, uh, you know, the smart contracts that are taking care of all these transactions. So you can visually see what's going on. And you could use your own software, you can use an outside uh, software. So it's very flexible, the system. And you could use these uh, uh, you know, uh, smart contracts as uh, any kind of appliance, a virtual appliance, and make it easy and transparent for you to understand what is actually going on. Because many companies have smart contracts, but they don't know what they're actually doing. Uh, a second example is maybe not directly in, from the finance industry, but for example, we have uh, this Energy Web Foundation where different companies inside of it are doing transactions together. And I think this picture very well uh, illustrates to you that it's a, it's a complex system. You, have, um, you can monitor networks with uh, using blockchain, but you can also um, enable payments, integ integrate your own or outside softwares. And here I wanted to concentrate on this red thing. So you can monitor a bridge, a token swap. And what does that mean? It means that you have, uh, for example, here you are using a stable coin. You are making payments, so you, you, you mint tokens, and once you have done the payment, you burn them. And you can clearly see on what date, how many tokens were minted, how many tokens were burned, and what is the balance. So it's very visually easy to see what's going on. The last uh, example is about instant audibility. As I said, when you have a system, you could see exactly how many, uh, of an upside, you can see how many wallets are active. You can see what, you know, the activity tokens and transactions being made. And on the lower part, you can see the voting, who owns what, how, how many, uh, let's say, wallets went for this decision or that decision. So it's very clear and transparent for you, real time, what's going on. And as I was told, <laughs> I don't have too much time. But I think the important thing is to understand, yes, it all looks wonderful. There's a lot of different kind of solutions that we can apply. Startups have great you know, solutions to apply. The technology can be used in many ways in the finance industry. But clearly, of course, we have challenges. It's not that easy. 
And I think the biggest problem comes from the industry itself. It's been developed over you know, hundreds of years. They have big legacy is, um, uh, systems in, in place. So we need to you know, uh, replace them. And there is very high cost involved. Uh, there's regulatory uh, challenges, as we heard from the, from the, uh, from the um, uh, regulator here. You need to solve is it, what is a token, tokenized asset. And there's a lack of history for certain things. And as we said, we should be aware of the security coming. So also there is a smart code next security that we need to take in place. So these all things uh, concludes my, actually my presentation. But I think I want to leave you with this thought. How big is the capital market, global capital market today? It's $200 billion. So if you could only have 1% of this entering the blockchain technology, I think it should be a big enough, interesting enough uh, market for all of us to want to be part of. Last slide, if you have any questions, if you want to learn more, you have our website, you have my email. Don't hesitate to come and talk to me. Thank you very much.